Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena episode 92 for Wednesday, April 6th, 2016. Minimalist Writing Apps. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. Writing on a small mobile device screen can be, let's say it can be a chore. Uh, That tiny screen isn't necessarily meant for sweeping novels to be authored on, but sometimes the challenge is less about, let's say, the keyboard on screen that you're using or the screen real estate limits, uh, and more about the tool that's being used to write inside. On a tiny mobile device, the last thing you need is a huge ribbon of options with all the formatting possibilities on screen at all times. It's better to have an app that's designed for a smaller screen, paring down those options to just the essentials. And even further, if you master the art of markdown, it can save you even more headaches. We're going to get to that in a second as we take a look at three apps that approach writing on your device with a touch of minimalism. It's this week's roundup. Here's a minimalist writing app with some history. IA Writer began as a Mac app six years ago and was successful due to its kind of minimalist approach. Last year, Information Architects brought IA Writer to Android and it's familiar in all the right ways. First, IA Writer is perfect for people who don't want to spend time futzing with formatting menus, opting for Markdown formatting in its place. Markdown is a simple syntax that is easily convertible to other formats. I'll go ahead and create a new document up here and kick off the writing process to show you what I'm talking about. Now, as I type, I'm going to show off a few examples of Markdown specifically. For example, hashtags are used to denote headings or subheadings. One hashtag followed by text formats that text in the first level of heading, for example, and on and on as you add more hashtags. I can bold text by adding two asterisks before as well as after the block of text to be bolded. I can create a bulleted list, let's say, simply by adding an asterisk at the start of a paragraph. Or I can create a a numbered list uh, by dropping a number at the beginning of that paragraph. And I can preview all of this by swiping left to see the result of my markdown text. There's so much more to markdown, though. So do a search and you can find out more about how to format that. The point is that this keeps you focused on writing and not looking for buttons to press. And speaking of focus, IA Writer has a focus mode that fades out the text that you aren't actively editing, so you can focus only on the text that you're currently writing to. IA Writer has sync to Dropbox as well as Google Drive, along with an integrated file browser, and you can publish directly to Medium as well as export to any number of other formats. And the app has hardware keyboard support if you've got one to plug in or uh, sync via Bluetooth. Find IA Writer for free in the Play Store. Now this next app underwent a significant amount of beta testing before finally exiting beta sometime last week, and it's fantastic. It's called Monospace Writer. It's developed by Jack Underwood. He's the creator of another favorite app of mine, Today Calendar. As such, it's designed extremely thoughtfully with mobile in mind. Now from the main screen, I'll tap the floating action button to create a new document and I can either you know, choose a name for the document or I can have it automatically name based on the date and time of my writing. Inside the doc, I'll type out a decent block of text here and once I have that, I can long press on a word or a phrase and once I've done that, a context menu actually pops up. Here I can easily bold or italic that selection. I can also change the text size of the entire paragraph greater or smaller. I can push the paragraph into a bullet point for emphasis or denote the paragraph as a quote from something else. The overflow menu here pulls up all the traditional clipboard options as well, like copy, paste, all that kind of stuff. Now at the end of the document, this is some interesting functionality here. I'll go ahead and add a hashtag and then a name. This acts as my folder organization 
at the main screen. So when I go out to the main screen, I'll see this doc inside that folder based on the hashtag I just created. And this part is even cooler. If I use hashtag encrypted, that locks the document, prompting me to choose a password for access to it. And if you happen to have a device with a fingerprint reader, it'll also give you access using that. Now, Sync to Dropbox is available in the free version, creating a monospace folder inside your Dropbox account for your notes to sync to automatically. And for more options, there is a pro upgrade inside the app. That brings with it Google Drive Sync for cross-device syncing, more formatting styles, and alternate typeface selections. Find a monospace writer for free in the Play Store with that $3.99 in-app upgrade for the Pro features. Here's a minimalist writing app that's, let's say, a bit more fully featured than the previous apps in today's roundup. So less minimalist? Minimalist Plus? I don't know how you want to phrase it, but it's for those who want a bit more out of their minimalist writing apps. Jotterpad Writer has some nice material design splashes, so it looks and feels modern and familiar right from the onset. Now, from the home folder screen here, I'll tap to create a new document, and here is the screen I'm going to spend a lot of my time in inside. I'll create a snappy title and tap into the body to type out a big block of text here. You can expand the keyboard options in the overflow settings, and that adds things like shortcuts for putting text inside parentheses or putting text inside quotation marks, as well as this button that pulls up a number of other handy markup shortcuts for doing things like inserting images or links or formatting the text. You can do a search for a term to bring up the integrated dictionary. As well, there's a bunch of statistics included here on your doc for things like word count, the amount of time it would take to read what you've written, all that kind of stuff. And there's support for markdown export as well as other common file types. But most of the support comes along when you upgrade to the creative version for $5. Now you'll get access to a number of other features, things like typewriter mode that focuses only the current two lines of text by fading out all the other lines for improved focus on what you're writing at this very moment. There's also a thesaurus and a rhyming dictionary included in that search functionality that I talked out a few seconds ago. These glasses up here actually switch you between edit mode and preview mode. This actually shows you how all of that markdown formatting that you're making actually looks in the final product. And full editing markdown support, like I said, inside all of your documents. Finally, there's snapshots. This keeps a revision history on the docs that you've created within this app for easy backup and in case you want to revert to an old version. There's more to it than even that, so it's worth your time to check out Jotterpad Writer for free in the Play Store with a $5 upgrade inside the app for the creative version. Now, of the three apps today, I'd say my preference kind of lies with Monospace Writer. I found Jotterpad to have a bit of a challenging layout at times, though I definitely appreciate some of the design touches and I really like some of the expanded functionality. And IA Writer is actually a pretty great choice, but something about the style of Monospace Writer just kind of appeals to me. Send me any that I've missed along this topic. All you got to do is email arena at twit.tv and I will hopefully be able to include it in an upcoming episode. And I look forward to your input. All right, Nintendo finally did it. And I'm sure by now you've heard at least to some extent something about this next app. Let's take a look at this week's big app. Nintendo released its very first entry into the mobile device app world, and it's called Mitomo. They first limited the release to Japan and then last week opened it up for the U.S. among a few other regions. It's kind of difficult to explain Mitomo's appeal. It's not really a game necessarily, but it has a lot of qualities that make Nintendo's games fun. It's more of a social network inside of a game environment, if that makes sense. You go ahead and you'll set up your account and you're going to create your own personal me. That's Nintendo's flavor of avatar that you've probably already seen in abundance on its platforms starting with the Nintendo Wii. All characteristics about your Mii can be tweaked. 
their voice characteristics, how they sound when they talk. My nickname is Reagan01. Uh, their mannerisms, skin color, hairstyle, all that kind of stuff. There's also a whole section devoted to dressing your me, if you like that sort of thing. And hopefully you do, because it's throughout this game in heavy doses. Thankfully, you begin Mitomo with a decent cache of coins to spend on a nice snappy outfit to start off with. In Mitomo, you are asked a number of random questions about yourself. What are you doing? Things you like, food you like, all that kind of stuff. And those answers are played for your friends inside the app when they choose to find out more about you. Maybe Mitomo is less of a social network here, more of a video game styled chatting app where the conversation is kind of guided by Nintendo. It's very hard to explain. There's absolutely a certain okay. type of draw to Mitomo. If it were just another social network, I'd be done with it, but it's so enticing to learn more and more about the people that you're connecting with inside Mitomo. And those Mii's, well, they're undeniably appealing. Find Mitomo for free in the Play Store. Now, I will admit I'm social network saturated at this point, but I don't know, Mitomo has a quality that's just maybe a little bit different. I'm not entirely sure if I'm gonna be using it six months from now, but it's definitely fun to stay connected and kill some time right now. So I'll continue to use it uh, in the short term. Send me your favorite apps and your categories to arena at twit.tv. I look forward to receiving those. You can always post those to the subreddit at androidapparena.reddit.com. Uh, the show will play live every Wednesday right around 5 p.m. Pacific, following tech news today at twit.tv slash live. And a new episode always appears later in the evening in the feeds and on the show page. You'll find that at twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I'll see you next week in the arena. Yeah.